the dreaded gombu or the imaginary disease that religion seeks to cure. The Dafri John Who can use me? October the 11th, 1982 It is perhaps even more difficult to dissuade people from belief in an imagined malady that is to relieve or cure them of a literal disease. Indeed, the work of the spiritual master is just this effort, and since that work is essentially an attack upon the self-imposed illusions of ego humanity, ego-bound humanity, it is met with an overwhelmingly reactivity or counter-effort that seeks to defend the imaginary disease or the whole context of ego-based illusions. For this reason, people tend to be unable to use the teaching or the person or the spiritual transmission of the adept, and, in fact, they either ignore that help or actively oppose it. Therefore, traditionally, the esoteric and radical philosophical teaching and agency of the adepts was kept secret within the circles of those who had personally sought out and qualified themselves for the great offering. All other people were given the lesser or exoteric instructions of religion, such as are promoted by popular exoteric institutions even in our day. The common or exoteric message of religion is essentially a call to action based on rudimentary belief. The most fundamental, so the most basic rudimentary belief is that there is a great being or principle in and beyond the world and we can improve our destiny by submitting ourselves to it or else we can suffer a lesser destiny by submitting ourselves, by dissociating from it. On the basis of this essential belief communicated to people in one or another specific historical and cultic form, it is expected that the social activity of believers will be made to conform to certain prescribed behavioural conventions, the general effect of which will be an harmonious social order. And beyond this basic social dogma, exoteric religion also communicates and recommends personal disciplines that extend the general principle of submission to the Great One or principle and, suppo and support the common effort towards social order and harmony. Therefore, the exoteric or popular re religious message also includes various personal or functional disciplines relative to the regulation of time, space, relations, sex, diet and so forth, and various sacred activities such as ceremonial worship, prayer for communion, and conventional or mind-based meditation. Over the last few centuries, and especially in the last 100 years, there has been a tendency on the part of adepts and esoteric institutions to make everyone, everything that has traditionally been kept secret openly available to everyone. The original impulse behind this effort was produced by the fact that the exoteric institutions of religion had, after centuries of political self-indulgence and dissociation, and great social institutions were no longer dissociation from their esoteric roots, become corrupt. Exoteric institutions and great social institutions were no longer in any sense led or even affected by the open or secret influence of esoteric initiates and adepts. Indeed, exoteric institutions had come to deny the validity of the esoteric and radical philosophical tradition and the adepts were merely excluded and even persecuted 
by the priestly and secular authorities. Therefore, a movement began in which the esoteric and radical influence of adepts and lesser initiates was brought out of the closet and into the public world. And the purpose of this was to restore the link between the ordinary world of egoic conventions and the real world of the wise, so that the negative trends of modern history would somehow be transformed or at least reduced. However, the dominant trends of human culture in the last few centuries have been almost entirely in the direction of the secular, non-sacred, materialistic and gross conventional organisation of mankind. And only coincident with that trend and its results has been the wholesale revelation of secret traditions and radical or most high philosophical systems. Therefore, it is now possible for any ordinary surplus character to drop into his or her local bookstore store, or university library and browse through vast collections of esoteric instructions. Scholars who are devotees of left-brained orderliness and verbal abstraction rather than of meditative submission to the esoteric truth of religion are the gurus of a new pharisaical effort to deny enlightenment and all the heavens as well to be learned and the great hard scores of the esoteric and radical philosophical traditions of the past have now been transformed into popular public institutions that promote everything from Kundalini meditation to enlightenment in pa package weekends and many, many disciplines that make the great affair seem as easy to attain as, or, as an orgasm. I have been struggling to teach within this time of paradoxes and illusions and I have, like many adepts in recent history, been committed to awaken the great way in the case of any and all people who came to me. As a result, my teaching work was, has expressed itself in the terms of crazy or free submission to the states and circumstances of those who have called themselves my devotees. But after more than a decade of the most intense efforts to serve devotees to the point of their awakening, I find myself in a position of having to acknowledge that, in general, people have not been able to use what I have offered. In spite of every effort I have made, it is only the most ordinary or exoteric aspect of what I offer that has gradually been embraced by devotees, and even that has been resisted by them all along and otherwise rejected by people in general. To date, only a handful of devotees have demonstrated sufficient maturity to qualify for the more advanced practices of the way that I teach. And that is perhaps as it should be. In other words, the more ancient traditional approach to teaching humanity seems to be finally justified by my own efforts and those of all modern adepts. That is to say, the esoteric and radical philosophy, philosophical teaching is, by its very nature, unusable to people in general, and access to adepts and their teaching should be such that only those who qualify by passing through the hard school of preparation ever get nearer the outer or exoteric level of sacred institutions. In the ancient traditional setting, only those with a unique and self-transcending impulse toward truth and realisation 
sought and were equipped to receive and use the esoteric and radical teaching of the adepts. Such adepts and their schools taught in secret or in relatively, relatively seclusion, seclusion to the few who sought them out and passed the hard tests of admission to their company. All others were helped only in the ordinary setting of conventional desires and aspirations, and that help was limited to the basic exotericism of world religion. And in the best of times, the institutions of religion and common society were also aligned to the leadership and authority of adepts and their agents. In our time, even exoteric religion has lost its base of legitimacy. The exoteric message of religion is not generally believed, partly because much of what is taught by sectarian religious institutions is false, absurd, merely self-serving or incomprehensible, and also in part because the common mind is now controlled by the conventions of scientism and secular knowledge. And the institutions of exoteric religion generally acknowledge no relationship to the living stream of incarnate adepts who may appear either within or without any or all established exoteric or esoteric revelations. And their high universal esoteric and radical teaching, demonstration or help, therefore the impulse of adepts and esoteric institutions to realign all of mankind to the total way of truth is perhaps understandable, but the effort appears to be as fruitless and inappropriate today as it ever was. Today as it ever was. My own effort has always been relatively secret. I have not engaged in broad public teaching, nor have I ever suggested that the way can be reduced to a popularly acceptable technical cult. But over time, I have had to become less openly available even to those who have responded to my published teaching and the institution that serves that teaching. This is partly because I have completed the basic summation of my teaching, but it is also in great part of the result of my gradual acknowledgement of the fruitlessness of the struggle I had engaged with the always growing number of ordinary enthusiasts who came to me over the years. I hope all those who consider my teaching will appreciate the lesson that has been proven by my own effort. The lesson is that the great consideration must be met with an equally great impulse toward realisation. There is no pop dharma. The way that I teach is not usable or even acceptable to those who do not enjoy a high degree of truly free energy and attention. A degree of free energy and attention that characterises only those who have gone beyond the consoling path of egoity and ordinary life. My teaching will remain in print for anyone to contemplate because it is communicated in terms that do not flatter or exploit the common or popular motivations of ego. But I assure you that there is no practice of the way itself until the ego bond is understood and in heavenly self-transcending disposition is activated most profoundly. To those who consider the way that I teach, I suggest a serious and even long course of preparatory study accompanied by a sober application to the more exoteric disciplines offered to beginners. Study the total way, but embrace the relational and functional disciplines of self, and practice the simple exercises of the way of divine communion. When that cultural preparation has become true hearing and seeing, when energy and attention are profoundly free, and when the free renunciate disciple discipline of self-transcendence has become the primary impulse, then and only then will the esoteric and radical practice considered in the literature of my teaching be acceptable and usable to you. Da. <coughs> Devotion, that's all there is. 
attention to you, beloved. From off the dreaded Gumbu onto you. Right as a relationship with you. Thank you, beloved. 